the Cannabis Business Coach. Hi, Mike Z here, author of the Cannabis Business Book, and you're listening to the Cannabis Business Coach Podcast, where I chat with and coach the highest performing entrepreneurs in the cannabis industry. Hi, Mike Z is, hi, Mike Z is, hi, Mike Z is, the Cannabis Business Coach. Hi, Mike Z here, and on today's episode of the Cannabis Business Coach Podcast, I'm joined by Vanessa Gabriel, the CEO and founder of Drop Delivery, which is based in California, but rapidly growing. And I'm so excited to have you here, Vanessa, because you're we, we were connected by some of my dear mutual friends in the New York cannabis world. And so I love the New York and Cali connection. And so thank you for being here. And if you don't mind, can you just tell the folks who might be watching or listening a little more about you and Drop Delivery? Yeah, no, thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. But um, yeah, so Drop Delivery is an all-in-one delivery management solution for cannabis retailers to launch their own delivery services. And what that encompasses is multiple pieces. So we offer businesses their own white labeled mobile app and they get SMS texting built into that. They get their own driver app and logistics. They get a digital loyalty program and rewards. And so our thought process behind that when building this was doing research and kind of figuring out what the landscape was for software in the cannabis space, especially for delivery, we saw that businesses were using um, a minimum of four to five different platforms, software platforms that weren't connected at any one time. And we saw this as very fragmented, um, you know, and not sustainable, not scalable, and most, um, most of all, not efficient. And so, you know, especially when it comes to marketing and knowing who my customers are, if I'm not using all of that customer data to market efficiently to my customers, then um, I could lose that customer because I'm not segmenting them properly. And so that was one of the biggest things um, when building drop was, you know, having this all in one solution and having the data all connected in connecting all of these platforms. Um, And so, yeah, that's a bit of what it is. Wonderful. Thank you for that. And I'm going to, even though I hate this, I'm going to do it. So it's like the, you know, because I hate when people are like, it's like the this of that or the that of this. But it sounds to me like it's the Shopify for cannabis delivery, which I I think is brilliant. Do you think it's fair? Yeah, no, it's 100% fair. And I think it's probably one of the best examples to um, relate what we are because experience matters to us so much. And it's what drives us as a product team um, is what the experience is not only for the business, but for the consumer. And so we think um, that our vision to really provide a great experience is what makes us really different and why we put all these pieces together because it's a great experience for the business and it's a great experience for their customers um, to order their cannabis. So, Awesome. Wonderful. Well, I'm very curious to, to hear how did you come up with this great idea and what inspired you to get into the cannabis business as an entrepreneur? Yeah. um, So my team and I, we've been working together for the past 10 years on like a multitude of projects in different industries, ranging from fashion to -to peer-to-peer marketplaces. And this is all prior to cannabis, Um, social streaming, um, the vape industry. And so, yeah, my co-founder, Mark, back in uh, 2017, he had moved to LA and was um, waiting in these long lines at his local dispensary, trying to to, um, purchase his cannabis. And was like, I should be able to just order on my phone um, my cannabis at my local dispensary, pick it up, skip the line, and earn loyalty points for my purchases at the same time. So that really gave birth to our first cannabis startup prior to job, which was called Greenlight. And so we worked on that and launched it back in California in 2018 when adult use um, was legalized. And so it really took off 
um, from there. So yeah, I could download Greenlight. I could see the local dispensaries in my area, place my order for pickup, skip the line. And like I said, earn loyalty points for all my purchases at the same time. And so, yeah, that like quickly went viral within launching. And um, nine months after that, we were acquired by a publicly traded cannabis company. And so that was such a big deal for us, obviously, to have such a big home run um, with our first cannabis business. But like I said, with every company that we've ever started or even any project we've worked on, it, like I said, it's always um, how can we make the experience better? And so just as consumers, we knew we can make that um, better on the retail side of things, on the dispensary side of things. So after, um, after Greenlight and the acquisition, um, we were thinking about what we wanted to work on, but we knew that there was still so much opportunity for technology to really revolutionize um, the cannabis space. We were like, we knew that delivery was going to be up next. And this was back in 2018. So like way pre-pandemic. Um, and we were always approached by um, delivery companies asking us, hey, do you have any kind of software for us during the green light days? And we we're like, no, no, not yet. Um, so we kind of came back to that idea. And so we started to, you know, speak to business owners, see what they were using, um, what their businesses processes were like. And yeah, we just knew that, hey, I, I think we could make this better. And it would be much more efficient um, as an all-in-one instead of these five separate um, companies that you're dealing with. Not only is it super costly to pay, you know, five different companies for even a basic, you know, package. Um, two, you're working with five different support teams. You're getting onboarded five different times. And then, like I said, lastly, um, three, your data is not connected and you're not getting to know who your customer, you're not marketing to them efficiently. Um, and yeah, so that really gave birth to the idea of drop and you know people think we're really crazy and they're like you built like five businesses in one basically um but for us we just knew that that could be the better way and we kind of like the sky's the limit for us we never kind of put limits on the ideas that we have and um yeah we we launched um in January of last year so pre-pandemic and yeah it's been pretty wild ever since so that's amazing. And I have to say, wow, because you actually had a successful exit in the cannabis world. There's not too many entrepreneurs who can say that. So kudos to you. And then also, you know, I think you probably are crazy because you have to be crazy to be an entrepreneur in the cannabis business. And if you're not crazy, when you enter it, you certainly will be made crazy by being an entrepreneur yeah. in this industry. So <laughs> just wanted to touch on that. But that's really, really an awesome story. And, and I think it's great that you had a team that you've been working with for years. And then you guys pivoted into cannabis and then, you know, have stuck with the space because obviously, as you're aware, and as you've demonstrated, you know, there's lots of opportunities for improvement and some of these tech inefficiencies, you know, I think that's one of the most exciting areas of mm -hmm. cannabis. And still there's, you know, from a tech standpoint, we've only had like sophisticated tech tools for the last few years in mm -hmm. this industry because nobody wanted to play with, with the cannabis space for many years. And now folks are realizing, oh, you know, maybe the stigma is is pretty dumb <laughs> so kudos to you for Thank for you. solving finding a real problem and solving it in a meaningful way and in a scalable way you know that's how you build a business that that can exit so you know obviously um i don't have to tell you that but i i want to ask you because if i'm not mistaken you were recently and maybe not so recent anymore but in the past year i want to say we're raising capital for for your company so i'm curious to hear about that experience for you and and how easy or difficult it was given you know i i would imagine with that previous exit under your belt it might have been a little easier or even a lot easier mm -hmm. but I, i'm you never know especially yeah, with the pandemic yeah. and all that. So, yeah. Yeah. So initially, you know, we dropped, we bootstrapped it from the beginning, um, you know, 
post acquisition and really just put our head down to build it. And some investment opportunities would come here and there, you know, with VC firms and, and traditional capital. And, you know, we would entertain them, but it, they just never worked out. Um, and so we were presented with the idea of crowdfunding and we had seen that you know companies did have were having really great success with it and so when we thought about it we were like this actually really aligns with who we want as shareholders and um how we can raise this money and so yeah we started our raise in i th- believe it was July of last or June or July of um, last summer and yeah so we went open we went into it with an open mind and I think it was really exciting to get connected to people that look like me and are just normal people that want to invest and be a part of companies success and growth and that believe in that and so it was really fast. I think um, we filled up the raise within seven and a half weeks um, within launching and yeah, raised the full amount um, that w- that yeah, that you can under um, regulation crowdfunding. And yeah, we have over like a thousand shareholders now um, in the U.S., all across the U.S. And yeah, it was a really exciting time. Like I said, we really didn't know what to expect going into it. We were just like, hey, you know, like this is our company. This is our vision. Um, you know, do you want to like kind of join us along for this ride that we're on and um, if you believe in it. And so, yeah, it, it was really interesting to see, yeah, just the questions that would come in from normal people, you know, because I was I've been pitching um, like the traditional route ever since I was like 19, 20, when I started my first company, I was doing pitch competitions all the time, talking to venture capital firms. And yeah, it just never worked out. And it was just funny enough that this new route of raising capital that isn't as normalized yet um, was the most successful and the quickest that it had ever happened for us, at least. So yeah, and I think it had a lot to do with, you know, we had great success. We as a team, you know, previously, and we had a lot of great team synergy, you know, Um, we've been working together for 10 years or so. And um, yeah, we have a vision that I think really excited people. And it was exciting to be able to relay, hey, this is where we're going. And this is where we want to go. Like, you know, what do you guys think? Do you guys believe in it? Um, If so, then cool, join us. Um, So yeah. Oh man, I have a I have a feeling I'm gonna be kicking myself for the rest of the day that I miss <laughs> missed out on that. No, on don't that worry. Reggae. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, we're actually gearing up to do another round um, later, uh, late summer in the early fall. So oh, um, awesome! All right, I yeah. have an, I have another uh, chance. Yeah, I, I'm curious if you can and if you're willing yeah. to share some more details about that process in case. There's listeners who who might want to consider that option. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I'm I'm curious to hear, like, you know, now there's a lot of different platforms that make it pretty easy to do this stuff. So I'm I'm curious if you went that route or if you managed it kind of internally, mm-hmm. or you know, to tell me a little about that process if if you're willing. Yeah, yeah, of course. So um when we started to think about crowdfunding um yeah we did our research as far as the different platforms out there there's you know a, there's a bunch that do exist um but we actually went with um through just a mutual connection a, a newer um platform called equifund and so we were like probably one of the first couple companies that um were featured by them and yeah it was interesting because we had to figure out how to tell our story in a way that was pretty lengthy which was a bit of a shock like if I think our page is still up but if you went and looked at our page like the story outline is like pages and pages um but it's you know we're trying to get to that normal investor that needs to know all of those things so that was a bit of a shock for us as a team because we had never put ourselves out there in that type of manner we um especially in like a very very lengthy we're like who's gonna read this but people actually do and this is that's why they felt comfortable enough to ask questions and then eventually invest so you know we were definitely proven wrong as a team because we 
obviously we've never done this and echo fund knows um you know how to pitch us and and what so that was one of the beginning phases was okay we need to figure out what story we're telling and even play devil's advocate of like what could people say about cannabis what are the stigmas how can we relay that in a text format um so that was really interesting to try and figure out and then um yeah, and it was really fun. Like we had to shoot a video so we can kind of humanize who we are as a team and um, put ourselves out there. So um, it all came together, I think, really well. And when it launched, like I said, we were just like kind of hoping for the best, but not exactly sure what was going to happen. But um, yeah, and then I think being really engaged with the audience and the people, like people were asking so many questions in the forum and I was super active every single day answering that. And I think that definitely helped because one, it showed that, you know, we're very serious about these people's inquiries. And two, um, me answering those questions could have been the, um, the end factor of why they wanted to invest or you know, maybe put them over the edge to invest. And so, yeah, and I I did a you know a bunch of research too on, um, yeah, how can we continue to just stay engaged with these people that were asking questions and um, providing updates uh, on press releases or any new press that was coming in. I was sure to always post that right away, um, just to yeah keep people excited that hey like good things are going on with us um, outside of the raise. And yeah, and then we were lucky enough to be connected to um, a couple of publications like uh, the National Cannabis Institute for Investing, um, Don Yoakum. I, I did um, a, an interview with him and kind of just talked about the raise and, and that definitely helped bring in um, a bunch of eyeballs and, and investors, which was great. And then I spoke with Neil Patel at Angels and Investors or um, yeah, angels and entrepreneurs, sorry, um, that his publication network. So that definitely um, helped just to, you know, get out there. There's these communities that are super into, you know, investing into early stage companies. And, and that was really cool to kind of get um, that marketing out there for us um, in addition to, you know, our own efforts. So yeah, I think that's why it was such a success. And um, I think that, yeah, in combination, all of those things kind of just helped it move along much quicker. Awesome. And I see, uh, I'm looking at the page over here. It's fascinating. It looks like you raised just over a million bucks from mm -hmm. uh, around 2000 investors. And you said it took about seven weeks. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's awesome. I think I think it's an interesting kind of extra bonus of going the crowdfunding route that, you know, all that interaction that you had with the potential investors and and all that is like, you know, it you're you're basically speaking to the community that you want to serve, at least mm -hmm. in some of those instances. And I think for any entrepreneur, there's really no better resource than going directly to your potential customers or future customers and actually having a conversation and actually speaking to them and saying, Hey, like, what do you care about? Tell me yeah. what are your issues? How can I help you? So yeah. I, that's awesome. I I'm like, Hmm, maybe I need to recommend this to more of my clients. To yeah. Go, yeah. To no, and, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different platforms. Um, and everyone pretty much says the same thing. It's just about how they tell the story and obviously what their fees are for their services. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think it's a viable route. And, you know, going back to now our new shareholders and investors, it's so cool because like on our last investor update, we asked like, hey, do you, what are the delivery services in your area? We'd love to, you know, pitch them drop, like and having um, them help us with um, in addition, obviously, to not just a monetary investment, but um, just their own networks to their own where they purchase from themselves, you know, so yeah, I love that. It's awesome. It's like, hey, you've got skin in the game now. So help us out. Make yeah. these intros. It's, it's awesome. Exactly. Uh, I love that. I, I definitely, definitely, I'm going to recommend this route to many, you know, it's not for everyone. But mm -hmm. I think it especially if you have a tech based cannabis business, 
where you can tell that story of like there's you know almost like double high growth potential which you know is kind of I'm, I'm being a little silly but you know I, I think it's it's a story that resonates for you know uh, I, what I'm gonna guess are mostly retail or smaller investors that want to get into cannabis that mm -hmm. like the idea of supporting you know a, a early stage high growth potential startup and especially if you can you know, connect with the founder and get that story. And, you know, I, I think it's, it's a compelling opportunity. So I'm glad that we get to highlight that today. So thank you, Vanessa. And yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for letting me talk about it. And for anyone listening, if you're interested, like I said, we're gearing up to do another round in the fall. So keep an eye out for sure. Nice. And will that be on the same platform? Yeah, it will okay. be. Okay. Awesome. So I can put that in the in the show notes. There will be a link to the Equifund and you can check out Drop Delivery. They're on the front page. Um, but I, I want to shift gears and ask you, what is a common misconception about cannabis delivery that you know is not true? Yeah, I think one that has always kind of stuck with me is that people think that it can't be safe, convenient, or reliable, just as if it was like your Amazon delivery or your Uber Eats delivery. And that's our whole mission is to provide that type of experience on that level, because as a consumer, we expect that that is the norm in all the other industries. So why cannot, why, why can't cannabis be just on that same playing field? So we're really excited to be able to provide that for the consumers um, with our technology. And I think too, you know, I'm really grateful for the kind of silver lining of the pandemic with delivery, because it has shown a, a, a big spotlight on, you know, delivery in itself in every industry. At one point, delivery kept businesses going and consumers going in the beginning of the pandemic, because that was all that was available. It was the safest, you know, so I think it's exciting to see, you know, now a lot of new regulations being considered, I think, much quicker on um, when it comes to delivery, not just on the retail side. Um, now that when uh, state different states are thinking about what um, the regulations are going to be. So, yeah, because I think they're like, oh, wow, if a cannabis business didn't offer delivery before, they do now because it they one they have to and two customers expect it and three it's safe you know so um in a post-pandemic world so yeah i think it's super exciting and you know obviously i wouldn't want a pandemic ever again but it is what it is and delivery is now being normalized and i think we won't even see what it's really going to be like um you know probably in like the next like two to three years to be honest because it's like still in the beginning phases of, of it. So. Right. And I think, you know, for better or worse, the pandemic definitely accelerated a lot of things for the cannabis industry, which in my judgment for the better. Mm -hmm. And I will make my shameless plug now for the cannabis business book, my book, which is now available in Espanol, which is, and, and and in audiobook and in the book i i make the prediction that retail dispensaries in the long term don't need to exist because why wouldn't you order cannabis via e-commerce just like you do anything else and you know i understand why from a regulation standpoint that isn't the case today but you know if you just think logically, like why, why should cannabis be special and handled differently when you could buy literally, you know, anything else on the internet delivered right to you. So yeah. I, I want to ask you a question more about the, the delivery landscape. And yeah. I'm, I'm curious to hear about your competitors and some of the other players in this space. Mm -hmm. And because I, you know, obviously I follow it, but I don't follow it 
nearly as closely as I imagine you do, right? Because you're, you're in it every day. And so to me, it's like, I know that there's other folks out there, other businesses out there who are trying to be like the Amazon of cannabis delivery, whereas you're really trying to be the Shopify, which I think is, you know, a much better play for a number of reasons. But I'm curious, one, do you agree with kind of my my assessment there? And two, is there anyone else who's trying to do things the way you are with your model and, and be more of the Shopify enabler as in, instead of the, you know, maybe Amazon ease or whoever else mm -hmm. plays in that space that wants to like be the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I hundred percent agree. Um, because we're trying to empower these businesses to be their own Amazon and compete on that level with technology with, on the level of an ease or a grass door or some of these major players that have the bigger budgets. And so we can empower all types of um, cannabis delivery entrepreneurs um, with these tools and technology that they might have never had access to before. Like if I asked a regular person today, hey, do you know how to get your own app? They'd be like, no, doesn't that cost like hundreds of thousands of dollars? Yeah, it could, you know? So um, to be able to provide um, this type of advanced technology to them and in a simple um, way, an affordable way, and to compete on that level and provide a premier experience as if they were their own Amazon, I think is super exciting because we're going to see like there's going to continue to be more and more, um, you know, delivery businesses as the, you know, years go on. And so we're excited to be able to, you know, hopefully be at the forefront of providing all the, all that they need in one platform. Um, which is, you know, really our goal. And as far as like competitors go, yeah, there's a bunch of companies that do exist, but they offer very niche um, services. So one might uh, be focused on just providing the SMS texting for cannabis businesses. Another might just be the e-commerce portion. Another might just be logistics. And so still, they still need multiple partners and a business is still paying multiple services. And like I said, it's not always the case that they're all connected. Um, so yeah, I think that they will continue to exist. And, you know, they haven't tr tried to do what we've done because like I said, it's crazy. It's much easier to focus on one business, one type of business and go for it than try to focus on five different businesses into one big business. <laughs> You know, it's, it's pretty insane. Um, and so, yeah, and I think that we'll continue to see that a, a business can easily thrive and scale and grow um, with an all-in-one solution because not only do we want them to just operate efficiently, but we want them to take their business to the next level. So how can we use all of that data that you're gathering to increase your sales? How can we use all that data to retain all those customers that you're getting? So, you know, starting to think of, yeah, just getting these business owners to think that you can be your own Amazon and we're going to help you do that. And we're going to do that with technology and software. Um, and this kind of like leads into what we're super excited to be working on is using all that data to work for them and everybody can gather data it's it's not anything new but it's about what you do with that data it really makes a difference in these business owners um it's so much data to understand I, I i couldn't even sit there you know to try and analyze it so we're super excited to explore you know machine learning and artificial intelligence and using all of that data to you know really provide actionable insights to these businesses and say hey we know that um this category or this brand of products has been a little bit slow to sell why don't you offer a deal on this time of day um to this specific set of customers that have previously bought products similar to this would you like to set this deal live yes or no you know and so with a click of a button um that could be done because the system had already thought about it for you and analyzed it for you so 
yeah, we're excited to, you know, really go the extra mile with data eventually. I love the pun. And so I'm curious now for, and feel free to say, I don't want to answer this, but um, for that upcoming fundraise, how much are you going to be looking to raise in that round? And feel free to say you don't want to answer it. it like, that's totally cool. Yeah, you know, we're still um, trying to figure out the route we want to go because there are two different ways we could go about this. Um, the SEC had just passed a couple, um, I think back in end of last year, that um, regulation crowdfunding, you can now raise up to 5 million. So before it was 1,070,000, which we had raise the max and so we could go that route or obviously there is another route um, which is a regulation a fundraise which would allow you to raise more than five million um and so yeah it really you know just depends we're still trying to figure out our, our roadmap and what we want to do we know that we have something really great here and obviously fundraising would help accelerate our expansion and our growth at a much faster pace um, so we're excited to figure out what that could look like for us and what route um, we think could work. So awesome. But it sounds like no matter what you're going crowdfunding, you're sticking with that and, yeah, and not yeah. going kind of traditional VC. No, no. Yeah, we're definitely going to stick with the crowdfunding route. It, it worked. Like I said, it's great to have this personal relationship with our shareholders now. And um, yeah, we're excited to see what a second round could be could do for us and what that could do for our growth. Right. And I'm assuming, and you don't have to tell me, you know, blink twice for yes, but um, I'm assuming you get better terms with the crowdfunding, right? You're going to get, hopefully, I, I would imagine you retain more control and, and ownership for yourself going the crowdfunding route, as opposed yeah. to having a VC who, you know, has greater leverage in that negotiation. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what's really cool about the crowdfunding route is, yeah, you do have a lot more control to, you know, figure out how much you want to potentially give up in, in terms of equity and what that really looks like and, you know, what the minimum investment is and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, it, it's, yeah, it's so it was so fascinating to learn about that and what that process was like and and feel like I am in control and that I, I still am in control and my team, we are in control, um, even though we have 2000 shareholders, you know, if I had a VC firm, I don't know if I would be able to say the same thing at this point. Um, so, right. yeah, right. Awesome. Vanessa, I want to ask you, what is your highest power or your greatest strength that has allowed you to succeed as an entrepreneur? Oh man. Um, I don't know if I have one, but I have two things that I feel like I have that have stuck out to me and people have told me is I'm definitely like a half glass full person. I'm always like pretty positive and can see the overall vision of things. Um, even if it's just a learning lesson, you know, I don't, I don't think I would have been in this position talking to you today if anything in my entrepreneurial journey had gone differently in any which way. And uh, we had a lot of companies that went nowhere, um, you know, and at the time I thought they were like the home runs of all home runs and they weren't, but if they were, I wouldn't be here sitting today and I wouldn't be in this position. So, um, and I think, yeah, that half glass full mentality kind of just led into let's just keep going. Okay. What's, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Um, it's okay. We're going to, we're going to figure it out and we're always going to figure it out. Um, and to, yeah, I was recently told that, you know, I do have a bit of a gift when I, I talk and I speak about my business. It's not everyone's forte to be able to easily and comfortably talk and we're learning that like with PR and stuff and, and my co-founders some of them are a bit more shy and you know it's it's a bit more nerve-wracking for them and so um and I always just thought it was like normal I'm like yeah yeah let's talk about business um so yeah I'm looking at that as like I'm grateful to be able to speak about things comfortably um and I have been for the past 10 years so I think it's it's definitely helped awesome and then what advice do you have 
for entrepreneurs who want to get into this industry. And especially, I don't know if it's different, but maybe, you know, for for women of color or people of non traditional backgrounds, or I, I don't know what the right term for for non white guys, what, what, what advice do you have for for those folks? Yeah, I think definitely find, find a problem and think of a solution and just start, you know, don't, I, there can be so many things that you feel like can keep you from not ever starting, but I think it's just, just start and figure it out along the way and be really flexible with the cannabis industry. Things are changing at light speed every other day. Um, and so it's definitely, you have to be flexible and just go with the flow in whatever path it kind of takes you. And yeah, connect with the community. People have been really great about, um, you know, helping and, you know, making connections. And yeah, I love telling the story of how I I got my advisors, my women advisors. I saw them in a Forbes article highlighting 15 um, women in cannabis. And I reached out to a couple, including Kristen, um and just sent them like messages on LinkedIn and then now they're like a part part of my advisory board and literally I was just like oh my gosh you're doing great things in cannabis can you help me and they're like yeah I can this is really cool so (laughs) awesome yeah yeah and you know I I will share first of all that first of all shout out to Kristen who connected us and she'd been she'd been on the show many moons ago but also you know, she and I go back in the New York uh, community, but also that's how I got my start in this thing was I literally cold emailed and LinkedIn and tweeted at and a- any way that I could, I reached out to people who I thought, oh, this person has more experience and expertise yeah. than me. Maybe they'll be willing to teach me or help me or or whatnot. And I was shocked. I think this was unique to cannabis, especially seven years ago when mm-hmm. it was a little less crowded that, you know, most of these people would say, yes, I'm happy to help you. Let's talk. What can I do for you? And I, I think that's a really important part of the community and the ethos of the people who are successful in cannabis business are motivated by more than just profit. And therefore they're not going to operate the same way that you know, traditional business operates to the extent of like dog eat dog and yeah. like, you know, zero sum game and whatever. It's like, we're very much rising tide lifts all boats. And even more than that, I, I think that people who are really committed to the cause and to the plant and all that, you know, who put that first before profit we have to support those people. Like we need those people to win. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think anyone who's in this space with, with what I, what I consider to be integrity, will have that mindset and will be willing to lend that helping hand when they can. Um, with that being said, I want to do a quick coaching session. And so I'm going to ask you, what is your biggest business buzzkill or roadblock these days it is currently hiring and scaling and growing our team to achieve more and finding the right people to do that and you know yeah it's been our small team for such a long time and obviously we know how to operate together we know how to execute we know what each other's strengths and weaknesses are and you know after the raise, we're like, we can't do this alone forever. We need people to help the cause, help build this to what we know it can be. But yeah, it is a struggle finding the right people, the right culture fit and um, just everything, you know? And it's even to the little things of, do they get back to you super quickly? You know, do they follow up on things? Um, and yeah, just like those little details of like, oh, well, I haven't heard from this person in like a couple of days. Like, they, you know, it must not be as, as big of a deal to them. And so we're, we're yeah, we're just trying to find people like us um, that, you know, want to win and want to give it their all. And so it's, it's hard. It's so hard. Yes, it is. And I'm like, I'm, I'm at the same time grateful you brought this question or challenge yeah. because it's so 
important and and timely and difficult and at the same time i hate this question because i'm like i have the same problem i don't you know i <laughs> i i need help with this one myself yeah. you know it's a um, universal problem it really it, is. It's it's really tricky in cannabis in particular, I think, because there's a lot of very passionate people and there's a lot of qualified people and the overlap of those two isn't always so great. And also, I think a lot of people don't realize, but even to work in this industry, even to take a job in this industry is likely going to require some sacrifice and is likely going to be a little more hectic or chaotic than your regular, you know, corporate day job. And I think if you're, if you have experience in the startup world, then it might be a little more familiar, but this is very much a unique industry and it moves very quickly and it's challenging and there's no shortage of obstacles. So yeah, it's hard to find people who are going to be willing to, to go all in on that. Um, so let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Is there, is there a particular, you know, position that's like really critical that you need to hire? Or is it more like an overall, you know, like, is, is it a sourcing problem? Is, is it a process problem? You know, help me understand the challenge for you. Yeah, yeah, I think um, it might be, a, it could be a sourcing problem. We're just trying to find like superstars, even like diamonds in the rough, you know, that like, yeah, it doesn't have, you don't have to have all these amazing qualifications or anything. It's just like, is do you show us that like you want it and you're committed and you will go the extra mile, even if you don't know everything. Um, and we love people like that because that's how each one of us was. We literally didn't know anything when we started out in business in general. Like I would Google everything and YouTube everything. Um, and so, yeah, just kind of like self-starter type stuff. And um, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, if it's that. And um, because sometimes like people are very qualified on paper and you're like this could be a great fit and then like I said or maybe they're lacking in a bit of passion or you know um yeah and as a as a startup too it's like hard watching someone's every move because our eyeballs are everywhere and so it's like if we bring you in you got to own it you know and if you can't figure something out try to figure something out you know um and don't wait don't you know like and we yeah like you said it's such like a fast-paced environment not only just as a startup in general but in cannabis like and us as a business we're learning new things every day and we're like oh my gosh we need an email for that and we need marketing for that like tomorrow and it's like okay let's just like make that happen right now um and so and just yeah being flexible or having yeah people be flexible to that kind of environment and kind of rise to the challenge, you know? And um, yeah, I think it's been, it's been tough because like I said, we've stuck, uh, it's been such a small team for so long that we're like, we're so selective in who we bring in. And then it's almost like so disappointing when it doesn't work out because you're like, but, but we know, but when we do find those people that, um have those superstar qualities oh my gosh it's like hitting a gold mine and it, they're so it's so fun to work with um because it's like you can throw stuff at them and they're like yeah okay let's do this and like yeah so I love that kind of attitude yeah awesome so I'm hearing here, here's here's what I'll, I'll reflect to you which yeah. is you know maybe it's helpful maybe it's not I don't yeah. know but I think I I think of it almost like dating and I feel like you, you have to have like your checklist of like non-negotiables and yeah. like, you know, need to haves and the nice to haves and then kind of like, I don't want to say rank people or, or whatever, but you, you kind of have to have that, you know, mm -hmm. like this is pass fail or like there, here's the concerns or whatever. But yeah. I, I don't know that that's just like the first thing that comes to mind for me, which 
It's probably not that useful. But my second no, thing. No, yeah, it definitely is. Oh, all right. Well, thank you. And the, the second thing, which I think is probably more helpful, is to go and find someone in the tech world or in the startup world that has expertise with this topic or issue of just like, you know, and it, and it's huge. You know, I, I personally am a big believer that, you know, human capital and culture and the team dynamics are so critical. And like, especially at this stage, it's really, you know, potentially costly. The wrong hire could be, could like waste so much time and resources and, it, you know, it, it's scary to take the risks on people and to, you know, I, I get all of that. So I would go, and this is just like my general coaching approach is like, let me go learn from someone who's really good at this or who, who has experience doing this, you know, in a different industry. And tech is what comes to mind for me because, mm -hmm. you know, it's my background and also, you know, kind of where there's a lot of this high growth action so I, I would ask you who in your network or on your advisory board has that experience or, or can help you figure out how to make this process a little less risky. Yeah, that's really, yeah, that's really what it is. Um, I think that's a great point is to, yeah, how can we de-risk this as much as possible? Because like you said, as this, it could be super costly, time consuming. It's like a whole nother job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we we don't have anyone <laughs> doing that job except all of us. Um, so yeah, and to your point about the first suggestion with the checklist, yeah, it's like they don't respond to us in Slack like same day. We're like, okay, you're showing us who you are, and okay, that's like a super non-negotiable because that is like the main way we communicate. Okay, sorry, you know, um, that that's not going to work for us. And so yeah, I think. Yeah, we, we're, we've been in this pattern of like finding people, flushing them out, finding more people just to kind of get to that one. But we've had a, some successful um, hires, which has been so exciting and game changing for us. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is what it's like when somebody handles something else. Yep, yep, uh, yep. But yeah, no, thank you. I really appreciate Awesome. And then one, one other thing that comes to mind that maybe is helpful and maybe not, but I'll, I'll offer it anyway, is, yeah. you know, I think culture, right? Company culture is such a, it's like a thing that gets thrown around all the time, but it's a real thing. It and is. It, it, it's kind of like, you know, esoteric or whatever. So I'm a big believer. And again, this is my bias. I'm a writer. So I like to write stuff down and have like, you know, like on paper, here's like, this is what our culture is. This is like the kind of people we want to work with. This, these are the values, you know, so you could have, again, kind of that checklist. Because mm -hmm. um, I think it's like, you know, from folks that I've worked with, I think it, it's to maintain that up to like 50 people, maybe even 100 people, is like doable but then once you get past a certain point it's like much harder to actually maintain culture so the question for me would be like you know in a non-pandemic world where things were like somewhat normal you know how how is that culture how are those values how do they play out in rituals or or in in you know in practice because that's my my belief is that like you know, you could have the values and how the values actually play out is the culture. You know, that, that's my kind of high philosophy here. But um, <laughs> and I'm going to offer this as, as a counterpoint, which is you also want, in my judgment, for the sake of diversity and accountability, you also want people that don't exactly fit the culture every once in a while, you know, or, or, you know, obviously you don't want someone who like undermines the culture or, or the values, but it's good to have a variety of perspectives and a diversity of perspectives. And yeah, you know, maybe if a culture is, you know, for example, let's say adventurous is like a value, maybe we want some conservative people in there too to balance things out. So mm -hmm. just, just an example for um, less for you, but more for the listeners to be aware of, but maybe it's helpful for you. I don't know. 
<laughs> no, no, I, I like that point of balance because if anything's unbalanced, then you know you're too skewed one way or the other, and it, it could turn out to not be good because too much of anything, you know. Yeah, yeah, even cannabis. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there and say the controversial thing, which is there is such a thing as too much cannabis, and it, there is a point where it becomes less helpful and more harmful so always an advocate of mindful consumption and you know not abusing the plant and with that said vanessa i want to thank you so much for taking the time to join me on the show and for sharing about your entrepreneurial journey in cannabis and and your business i think you're you know still in the early stages of something that's going to be a very exciting and very successful venture. And I will look forward to that second round of crowdfunding. Before I let you go, I wanted to give you a chance if there's anything else, maybe we didn't cover or any closing remarks or thoughts or, you know, or even information you want to share about how to connect with your team. Oh, also, wait, hold on. I, I'm sorry, but I just remembered I wanted to share this, which is you're probably already doing this, but in that investor pool, you know, I wonder if you've gone to that investor pool for to hire or to look for candidates through the investor pool. No, that's actually on the next update. Someone brought that up. One of the advisors brought that up um, that we should do that. So I was nice. like, nice. all right. Yeah. High minds think alike, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and so, well, yeah, I, I wanted to give you that one too. So, um, okay. That's it for me. Vanessa, do you have anything that you want to add or share or? Yeah, uh, yeah. no, thank you for having me and being able to share a little bit of my story and, you know, um, touch on what Drop's doing and where we're going. But um, yeah, you could find us at dropdelivery.com um, and follow us on Instagram at the drop.app. And yeah, and my email personally is Vanessa at dropdelivery.com. Pretty easy. Um, yeah, for anyone who would like to connect. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. This was awesome. And I wish you nothing but continued growth and success. And if I could ever be a resource, reach out to me because yeah. I, I think you're onto something huge. Hi, Mike Z is. Hi, Mike Z is. Hi, Mike Z is. The cannabis business coach. Hi, Mike Z is. Hi, Mike Z is. Hi, Mike Z is. The cannabis business coach.